Hello everyone, this is Dr. Elias from the Department of Education, Azara University, Mansehra. In my previous presentations, I discussed experimental research and its various types. And we basically discussed experimental, true experimental research design and pre-experimental research design. And we also mentioned quasi-experimental research design. This particular presentation is actually to briefly discuss and elaborate on the concept of quasi-experimental research design. So what is quasi-experimental research design and uh, what is the process of quasi-experimental research design? And also, what is the re rationale for conducting quasi-experimental research designs? So let us begin with a brief definition of this particular research design. Quasi-experimental research design is conducted in natural settings or in natural environment. And so there is no created environment or artificial environment. And this is generally, uh, and generally there is no random assignment of subjects into experiment or control group, as is the case in true experimental research design. Um, there are practical reasons for, for this. In many cases, random selection or random assignments of subjects into the experimental and control group are not possible. And here comes the, uh, the value of quasi-experimental research design. So instead of the traditional control group, there is generally a comparison group, which is as similar to the experimental group as is possible on factors other than the treatment. The control group and the comparison group, um, sorry, the, the experimental group and the comparison group um, are very similar to each other. The only difference between them is that the experimental group is given the treatment while the control group is not given the treatment. The control group or the comparison group uh, uh, is not actually given the treatment. Now, um, generally, uh, quasi-experimental research designs are conducted as a replacement for true experimental research designs. Um, especially when true experimental research designs are not feasible, when manipulation is not possible, or when the practical realities of, um, of social life um, do not allow for the artificial uh, or experimental conditions. And so, this is a replacement for true experimental research designs. However, quasi-experimental research has its own merits. For example, the advantage of being conducted in natural environment. As we know that true experimental research designs are generally conducted in more artificial environments, created environments. As a result, they might, the, the results or the outcomes of true experimental research designs might not be um, be totally applicable in real life situations, especially in social phenomena or educational phenomena. So quasi-experimental research designs, because they, they are conducted in natural settings, they might have more applicability to, um, in terms of the application of their findings or results to the um, and to the social phenomena in, in natural settings and in, in real situations. The examples in which quasi-experimental research designs um, can take place include educational settings, social settings, organizational settings that follow a set routine or timetables. So as we know that in most educational settings, in most social settings, and in most organizational settings. There are certain routines that are followed, there are set timetables, and true experimental research designs need 
um, that these timetables and routines may be disrupted. This is actually not the case with quasi-experimental research designs and as a result, these are more suitable and applicable research designs in such situations. Now, quasi-experimental research designs um, have been categorized variously. One of the most, uh, some of the most familiar types include the time series experimental research design, the multiple time series experimental design, and the non-equivalent control group research design. The time series experimental research design, uh, the process of this particular research design is that uh, we measure a single group for some variable for a predetermined period of time. Then that particular group is given treatment and then the same group is measured for the same variable post-treatment for a predetermined period of time. And the possible difference uh, may be attributed to the treatment. Um, uh, we can think of an example in the educational context. For example, a class, a particular class in a school uh, might, uh, be, might be measured for a predetermined period of time on their academic achievement in a particular subject, then they are given treatment, which means that uh, these, this particular group is taught through a particular uh, research method, uh, sorry, teaching method, and then again, the same group, the academic achievement of the same group um, is measured for a predetermined period of time post-treatment, which means after the application of that particular research method. And then um, it, is, um, it is actually analyzed whether there is a, there is a difference in, in the academic achievement uh, in the pre-test pre and in the post-test situation. And if that is the case, this particular difference may, might be attributed to the treatment or to the use of that particular research method. Then the multiple time series design. Um, in this particular research, research design, two, two groups are measured for a particular variable for a predetermined period of time. One of the, uh, the group is then given treatment. And the, the, the group that is given treatment is the experimental group. Then the two groups again are measured for a predetermined period of time on that particular variable. And the possible change may be attributed to the treatment. So again, if we give example in, from the educational context. So, um, let us say we take two classes um, in a school to similar classes in a school and they are given a pretest for a, for a period of time and their achievement is actually noted. Then one of the groups or one of the classes is given treatment which means they are taught through a different method. Um, the effect, the, the effectiveness of which uh, the researchers are interested to measure in. And then, once this is done, the two classes are again given post-test for a predetermined period of time. And it is analyzed whether there is any change in the achievement of the two classes. So if there is a change, if the experimental group has done better or worse than the control group, this particular change might be attributed to the treatment. And now we move on to the last one, and that is the non-equivalent control group design. So in this one, there are two groups, groups A, group A and B. 
and group A is given a pretest and then a treatment and then a post test while group B is just given a pretest and a post test in this one there is also there might also be the uh, the use of double blind peer review which actually means that the researchers and the subjects or the participants do not know which subjects are put in experimental or control group. This will actually aid to the authenticity of the research of the experiment pro experimental process and the possible outcomes of the experiment or the treatment uh, might be might only be attributed to the treatment rather than to other variables that might come as a result if the researchers or the subjects the participants actually know about the treatment and the, and so the double blind, uh, blind peer review is actually to eliminate the possibility of the researcher bias or influence um, or or influence response of the subjects. And so in this particular research design, what um, um, in summary, what we can say is that uh, if there is difference between the, um, the outcomes for the experimental group and the control group, the outcomes might, might be attributed to the experiment. So again, if we take two classes, class A and B, which are pretty similar. Class A is given the pretest. Let's say um, they are measured, their academic achievement, they are given a test to, to actually measure their level of, uh, of attainment or academic achievement on a particular, in a particular subject. And then they are taught in a particular way and then they are given a post-test while the second class is just given the pre-test and the post-test. And so this, is, this, this will be an example of the non-equivalent control group design. Um, there are some um, very useful readings, sources. And one of the one, one very important source is Campbell and Stanley's experimental and quasi experimental research design for research. Similarly, these other sources are also very useful for further understanding of these part, this particular research design and its different types. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye.